Today we are going to install B2 Evolution on a shared web host using FTP. Uh, there are a few things you will need. First, you'll need the B2 Evolution zip file. You can download that from b2evolution.net. Uh, next, you're going to need some web space that supports PHP. Most shared web hosts do, and there are a lot of them are generally under $10 a month right now. Uh, this is where the application file, files will be stored, and this is where your requests will be served from. So when people want to see your web page, uh, the web server will be sending it out. You'll need an FTP client to connect to that web space. FileZilla for Windows or Transmit for Mac are both good ones, but it's pretty easy to find an FTP client. And you'll get your connection settings from your web host. This will allow you to connect to your web space and upload files. Next, you'll need a MySQL database. This is where the posts, users, and settings are stored and your web hosts can create the database for you or you can create it using their panel and they'll be able to help you get the settings that you'll need here in just a moment. Right now we've got our web space set up and I've got an FTP client connected to it and ready to go. So here is the zip file and I'm gonna unpack it and then we have a B2 Evolution folder. I'm gonna go inside it. There's a lot of documentation stuff in here. You don't really need to send it up to the server though. The only stuff you need to send up to the server is what is in the blogs folder and if you want the word blogs to be in your URL then upload the whole thing but since I want the blog to live right at the root of the domain I'm gonna go into the folder and select all the files and upload them. I've finished uploading then we can head back over to our web space reload and it should actually find some files this time and it did and it tells us that we're we haven't finished installing yet okay so we'll click here to go to the installer and this is where you're going to enter those settings that your host gave you. The base URL is usually correct, you probably don't need to change that, but do put in your email address here. And update the config file. Now this worked, it said it updated, but if you do get a message here that says it was not able to write to the file, that's no big deal, it just means your web host runs uh, PHP, not as your user account, but as somebody else. So all you need to do, and it'll have the instructions there, but you'll come in here and find the basic config file, and you will change the permissions on it. So that usually means just allowing everybody to write to it. And most FTP clients do that by right clicking. But anyway, we didn't need to do that for this particular host. So we're ready to do a new install. I'm going to leave this checked so we'll install some example blogs and we can see how things work. And it's also got some, uh, some good instructions on how to use the software. Let's click go. It's creating all the tables in the database to store our stuff. And it's adding the default data sample contents and it's done great uh, we're gonna need this password in just a minute the first user is created automatically and given a random password and the username is admin so let's log in with that user account okay we're logged in the first thing that I always do is go directly to users edit that admin account and I'm going to change the name to my name and I'm going to change the password and this is pretty important because that long password is not something you're going to be able to remember so save your new account good and let's do one more thing before we go on and we're going to go in our FTP client and find the install folder and we're going to delete it that's pretty important because uh, you don't want that hanging out there where people can access it. Okay, so let's check out our newly installed blog. Looks like it worked great. And if we're ready to write, we'll click on Write. And you're ready to start creating content. 